Okay, so in the sake of, for the sake of time constraints, uh, you know, I've got all these videos that are like an hour long. <laughs> I figured uh, we could do a quick and easy one here. We'll save the longer one for the next Geo 7 because it's got some major issues. So that'll be the long one. That'll be the fun one to watch. But this one wasn't too difficult to tackle, but it was a very odd repair. Uh, this was this entire monitor system was given to me as part of the lot of six that I've been working on. I have two left. Another Geo 7 that's, like I just mentioned, that'll be the fun one. And then a 25-inch uh, uh, KTM-F, which is a Cortex-slash-Sharp. Uh, I have to get that working, too. It's in vert vertical collapse as well. But uh, I got this one. I fired it up. And it was working, but it had vertical collapse. You know, the thin white line across the middle of the screen, we're all aware of what vertical collapse is. So, you know, the first thing to do is test all the components in the vertical circuit that are known to cause vertical collapse. On a Geo 7, you got X401, which is this transistor right here. Uh, the other sister transistor back right here is X402. Uh, let's get some light in here, sorry. Uh, X402 is the that guy right there. Then you have X401, which is that guy right there. You've got R12, uh, which is this Oh, sorry. R412 is that one right there below the capacitor. Uh, maybe you can see it. Yeah, R412. That can go bad. Uh, the FR, what is it? FR401. FR401 is that white ceramic fusible resistor right, uh, right there. That 68 ohm a uh, fusible resistor, that can open up. If that's open, you'll have no deflection. That's good, 68 ohms. So everything checked good. Uh, I used all of a, I used a known good Geo 7 for testing. I tested every resistor in the vertical circuit, every component, everything that would normally cause vertical collapse or no deflection, and it all tested good. I could find nothing wrong with this chassis. So I'm like, hmm, I start scratching my head. Uh, and the note that came with it said, um, not sure what's wrong with this one. So the note wasn't really too helpful, but uh, yeah, after powering it up, it had vertical collapse and tested everything, nothing was wrong. So I thought that's kind of odd, you know? So I threw another, the known working chassis that I had that I was using as to, for testing against this one for readings, fired it up, and it was collapsed. I'm like, oh, that's odd, because I knew that one was working. So I have two collapsed Geo7s on the same tube, so I thought, hmm, maybe I have something wrong with the yoke. So I took both of these, plugged them up to the other tube that I have for this other Geo7, and they worked flawlessly. So now I knew I had a yoke problem. So when I measured the yoke, I had normal resistance readings across uh, this. I don't know if this is the vertical. I think this is the vertical. No, I'm sorry. This is horizontal. The white and red wires are horizontal, and the gray and, and white are the vertical. So I had 2.3 ohms across the horizontal, and across the vertical I had zero, open. I had an open yoke. I've never come across an open yoke before. They've always been shorted, or some other kind of uh, impedance problem or something, uh, way out of tolerance, what have you, but I've never had one before that was open. And it turns out that on the bottom side, see how some of these strands are just kind of loosey-goosey in here? You've got. Uh, like this here is loosey-goosey sticking out. This one here is sticking out. Now there were a couple windings on the bottom. Well, you have a horizontal and a vertical winding. But there were a couple strands on the bottom side here that were sticking out. And one of them was broken. Uh, let's see. I've already got it repaired. But you can see the hot glue under here. Uh, right there. Right under that hot glue was a uh, piece of the winding that was kind of like up here where they're just sticking out loosey-goosey and it was cut in half and I'll pause and show you a couple pictures here Um, but yeah, the, uh, that was broken and I was able to scrape away the coating on the magnet wire here and solder it back together. And after that, my 
vertical winding reading went from 0 to 55 ohms, just like it's supposed to. So now I have 2.3 and 55. After that, full deflection. So it wasn't a difficult repair. Uh, it just took some time to eliminate the chassis as the problem. And to when I, when I read the uh, vertical windings being 0, I thought, that's odd. It's an open... Uh, yoke. I've never seen that. So there, there has to be, uh, you know, it's broken somewhere. One of the strands is broken. So I just did some inspecting and I found it pretty quick. I, I scraped off the, the edges of those wires and touched them together with the uh, alligator clip and tested again. I had 55 ohms. I said, hey, there we go. So I soldered them together, covered it with some hot glue to keep it in place. And now I have full deflection. So let's turn this around. There's still issues with the tube. It's got some convergence issues and it takes forever to power up so it needs rejuvenated. I'll take care of all that. But we can power it up here. And I've already had it on so you don't hear the high voltage. But uh, let's uh, yeah. see how it takes forever. It needs rejuvenated something awful. Any day now, there it goes. Man, it's it's a very tired tube. Uh, but hardly any screen burn, and this came out of a dig dug. But as you can see, the image is beautiful. Some convergence, I have stuff laying on my buttons over there so it scrolls through fast, but it looks and works great. Needs some convergence and color adjusting and rejuvenation, but not too bad. So that's a quick and easy one for you. Um, the next one will be quite the ordeal and you have to look forward to that because I'm not going to show it off yet. I think some of you some of you may already know, but yeah, fully working GO7, uh, rebuilt, reflowed, inspected, good to go. And the whole problem of the uh, vertical collapse was a bad or open uh, winding on the yoke. I've never seen that before. I think somebody was taking the, the chassis out because it had a different problem and maybe the cap kit and flyback fixed it. Uh, but when they took the, the chassis out, they uh, snagged that wire and broke it in half I can't say but that was the problem open vertical winding on the on the yoke so it's good to go and stay tuned for the next video